welcome to the first of many iMovie tutorials. This tutorial is specifically made for iMovie 11, however this tutorial also works for iMovie 09. Today we'll be going over the basics, even if you have been using iMovie for quite a while, I still recommend you watch this once, maybe there'll be some new hidden tips and tricks that you will come across. So first off, we need to be able to see all the tools available to us in iMovie. First way to do that is you go up here, click on iMovie, click on Preferences, and under the General tab, make sure the Show Advanced Tools box is checked. That should give you access to things like Picture-in-Picture, -picture, Green Screen, and additional items that will be very helpful for you in iMovie. So let's go over the Windows. This window in the top right is basically how your movie is going to look once you export it. So when you hit the space bar, the movie will play. You can also hit the little play button down here. The next window we'll go over is this top left one here. For me, it's pretty much my project and my project library. For some of you, it may be different. Some of you have your events and your events library up here. The way to switch them is this little icon here. When you do that, your events and your event library will swap places. This could be handy for some longer projects that you might need to see more room. I just tend to have it like this for now. Now for your project library, that's this little button here. It's a list of all the projects you've been working on. You don't have to save them, it automatically saves for you. So you don't have to save before you quit. So anyways, let's, uh, let's go back to a project here. You can double click it or click edit project. So here's a nice little video there. Now if you want to start a new project, it's pretty easy. You just go File, New Project. For iMovie 11, it gives you a bunch of little themes you can work with. Um, I believe iMovie 09 has a more limited option when starting a new project. But you just hit Create, and you can work on your project right here. Now the bottom windows is your event library. Now personally I call this the event library and these the movie assets. The event library is basically a collaboration of all the items you have imported into iMovie over your years. I highly recommend staying organized. I have specific folders. Uh, iMovie tends to organize it by year, but those get way off track if a project takes multiple years. So try and make sure all your stuff is in a nice clean folder. Now I call these movie assets, some people actually call them events, but it doesn't matter. Now the way to get movies into iMovie that I use the most is basically I have my movie folder and I just drag and drop items that I plan to use. And put them straight into my event. That way it stays organized. A lot of people don't like doing that. So you can go file import as well. You can select what, where you want to import from. Click on movies. You can pick, a, pick an item there. Now I highly recommend you say copy files. I'll explain that in a moment. Now others like to import their footage directly from their camera straight into iMovie. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend taking the video footage from your camera and putting it onto your computer and then from your computer and putting it into iMovie. Your camera is not a spot that you would want to store your backup footage. But for those of you that do that, you use this little icon here. The one way to the left. Now some people have their video footage trapped on their camera and they don't know how to get it out of their camera and onto their computer. If your camera is connected to your computer, then iMovie should be able to work with it. Now some cameras, they don't quite work on the Mac computers. 
So what I recommend doing is restarting the computer with your camera connected into it. Hopefully iMovie will reboot up with it. You could also borrow a friend's computer, get your footage off through there. There are just so many different cameras and so many different methods of getting footage into iMovie that I can't go through over all of them. Each camera is different. So basically pick your preferred method for getting footage into iMovie. Now you have to double check to make sure that your footage is correctly saved in iMovie. The way to do this is you go to your video file, right click, and click on reveal in finder. And as you can see, it's found in your computer. What I recommend doing is clicking on these little icons up here. Click on the show it as columns. And then you just backtrack using left on the arrows. And as you can see, it's coming directly from an iMovie event. If you delete the files that are coming from the iMovie events folder, your video footage will be lost. This is what iMovie is using to use your project. Now let's get working on uh, our video footage. So as you can see, it says the total time of our project right here, 17 seconds. If you want to add footage to it, what you do is you highlight a segment. By holding down the left click on the mouse, you'll get these yellow rectangles here. You can click on these little icons to be more precise too. And you just drag it and drop into your window up here. Now as you can see, your video footage now has these orange bars. What that means is your footage is now being used in the project that is in this window. So that's what those orange lines mean. Now for precise editing, sometimes you may need to see more frames per second. The way to do that is this little icon here. If you drag it to the left, you'll see more frames per second. If you drag it to the right, you'll just see the thumbnails of your video footage. So keep that in mind with this little bar here. It can be very handy, especially if you're doing detailed work. So where are all these special effects that people use in iMovie? Well, a lot of them can be found by simply double-clicking video footage that is in your project. When you double left click, a little window will pop up. Now, here you can click on things like video effect and see how video footage would look with one of these added. That's one spot. There's also audio effects. This will make things high pitch, low pitch, robotic, things like that. Video is basically used for color correcting. Then there's even more advanced audio tabs. If you're using iMovie 09, your audio tab it does not have nearly as many features. That's basically the main difference between iMovie 11 and iMovie 09. iMovie 11 just has more audio features. However, if you're pretty clever with GarageBand, you can probably get away with most of these items and updates. So that's double left click. Now one other thing to remember is, let's say you completely screwed up the color of your video. You can always click down here on revert to original and everything will be lined up back to the way it was. There's also edit undo. Another spot that can have handy tools is just simply right clicking. These are not special effects, they're more of just editing tricks. So, and other helpful tools that are, you know, it's just conveniently located. Don't forget about your right click. Now, one other spot that has a lot of helpful editing tools is this little gear here. Now, if you left click on that, you have a bunch of little options here. Now some of those are self-explanatory, 
but I will go into advanced ways to use them in future tutorials. So that's basically working with video. You have the double left click to bring up the majority of the effects you use, the right click for some helpful editing tools, and the little gear of course for some of the other assets. So that's working with video. Working with pictures for like a slideshow is a little different. You don't import the files. Some of them are compatible with the iPhoto video stuff, but I don't recommend doing it like that. I recommend just going to where the photo is and dragging and dropping it straight into your project. Not into the event library, just straight into the project. Now every time you add a photo, it's going to automatically add a Ken Burns effect. What a Ken Burns effect is, is a filming style where the camera slowly zooms in and zooms out on a certain segment. You can kind of see that here. If you want to get rid of that, that's basically controlled using the cropping and rotation part, the little gear. You can change your Ken Burns effect from starting in one spot to going to another. You can also crop around For a sniper scope, you'd basically use fit or crop. Then you click done. So the gear becomes more essential when using with photos. If you double left click, you can still apply video effects, but a lot of things are disabled because you can't really fast forward a still image, so it doesn't have some of the traits like that. You can change the duration, and clicking this little box will apply it to all pictures, so you can make them all uniform. You still have your video adjustment options here. And once again, you don't have the audio. So it's pretty simple working with photos in iMovie. You can make some very nice slideshows and transitions here. So that's pretty much the basics when working with pictures and videos, where what all the windows do, where all the stuff is located. Uh, what we'll be going over next tutorial is what some of the buttons do, such as these ones down here. So once we have the basics down, we will start editing with special effects and whatnot. Use these next two weeks to get yourself familiar with iMovie, start thinking of a project, start getting familiar with the layout, finding out a layout that works good for you, learn your camera, learn your ways to import, just start getting familiar with iMovie. If you want to see the special effects that we'll be working on and the concepts behind them, click on the annotation that pops up or links in description. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make an iMovie tutorial every two weeks. Make sure you hit like so other knows this is a good tutorial. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that way. Make sure to check out the description. I put a lot of work into the description. Provides a nice outline for the tutorial. Frequently asked questions are answered in there. If your question is not answered in the description, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. If you have a special effects request, also post that as a comment. So once again, thanks for subscribing. I look forward to helping you with your movies and your future projects.